I'm an artist, Leonard Kozianski. Welcome to my studio. This is where I work. This is where I paint my pictures every day. And I'd like to talk to you today about a painting that I did in 2018 called The Skaters. But first, The Skaters began with an earlier picture called The Skater that I did in 2017. And here's a picture of The Skater. What I really loved about this painting was the back part of the space, the, the top part of the picture, those houses and the moon and the car and the street light and the, and the illuminated windows. I really liked that part of the picture a lot. I cropped it. I took it into Photoshop and I cropped it and I said, you know, this would make a very nice painting by itself. You should do a painting of this as well. I did a 5 by 8 inch pen and ink drawing. Here you can see the pen and ink drawing in my sketchbook. I liked it a lot. Not completely, but I still liked it a lot. But what I really liked was the original part of the picture. So I printed out a photograph of that top part of the painting. And then I made some edits. I made some changes. I added some skaters. I put some smoke coming out of the smokestacks. And I eliminated some things using pen and ink. And I like this composition a lot better. So I did a, drew a pencil grid over this, and then so I could blow it up to a larger canvas. And here is the painting. It's called The Skaters. I did it in 2018. It's 26 inches high by 42 inches wide. And one of the things that I really liked about this painting was those illuminated windows and looking into those windows and seeing what's going on. Because where I grew up in Parma, Ohio, if you would walk around at night, you know, you could see things going on in different windows and, you know, different people, different parts of their lives and different things going on. One of the artists who I've always admired is named Roger Brown. And he's a Chicago artist, a, a generation ahead of me. He's a Chicago artist from the late 60s. Uh, who showed with the Phyllis Kine Gallery in New York. I love this gallery, and I was absolutely delighted when they decided to represent me as well. I felt so honored to be showing in the same gallery with Roger Brown, who I greatly admired and had for years. Here's the dealer over there on the left, Phyllis Kind. She wasn't a very kind person, believe me. She was a very difficult person, but she was a very good art dealer. And we all loved her. We all respected her. And, but this was the Roger Brown painting uh, called The Talk Show Addicts, done in 1993. And if we look at the houses, and if we look inside the houses, we can see that all the people are pretty much identical. Their houses are identical. They are identical. They sort of have very similar poses. The women all have very similar hairstyles. And Roger Brown's view of humanity is sort of very much a Marxist view, sort of a Stalinist view, where everyone is just like an economic unit, an economic entity. Everyone's a number. They're all alike. And my view of humanity is not like that at all. I'm an individualist, and I think we're all different, and I think our lives are very different. And even though there may be a lot of similarity between our homes and between our lives, there still is a lot of difference. And it's those differences that make our lives what they are. And we should be aware of that, and we should live our lives as individuals. So when I did my painting, The Skaters, even though the houses are very much alike, they're still all very different in their perspectives. And even though the people are similar, they're still very different in what's going on in their lives. For example, here over there on the left, we can see a couple and they're embracing, they're kissing, they're in love. And it's, their life is full of romance. And even though that's kind of corny, uh, still, that's very much part of our reality as human beings. And then, what happens after we've been in love for a while? Well, the love can fade, and we start to become aware of each other's faults and failings. So here we have a couple, and here's the woman arguing with the man. She's pointing at him, she's scolding him. And they're arguing about his drinking, as we can see with that bottle between them. But they're still very much a couple. 
and they're obviously they're they they very much love each other, but they're not happy with each other at the moment. And then here we have this person in the next window drinking, and you know when we're alone, we can drink all we want. Now she's drinking, probably drinking a soda because she looks younger, uh, but maybe not. Maybe she's drinking a beer. But when we're by ourselves, we can do whatever we want. We don't have to answer to anyone else. And here, what happens if we don't have anyone else in our lives? Well, our lives can feel kind of empty. And here we have these empty rooms with the light shining from one room into the other. Very much empty and kind of, uh, kind of a lonely environment compared to this couple over here in these windows where they're, they're angry with each other. Their backs are to each other. They've argued about something and they're not talking to each other but they're still very much connected to each other by their anger. You know, they may seem alienated, but they are still very much connected by that emotional reality between them. Especially by comparison with this next couple where they have kind of come to terms with their anger. You know, she's upstairs looking out the window, he's downstairs looking on his computer or looking into the monitor's computer working on his computer. Uh, they've come to terms with their differences and with their anger. And maybe they are alienated or maybe they are just very comfortable living their lives a little bit separated from each other. And what causes all of this carrying on between the couples, this love and, and arguing and anger and coming to terms with anger? Well, animal energy is the driver, is the engine of all that. And so here we have this dog barking out the window, sort of a symbol of animal energy. And notice, just a little technical note, notice that the, the shingles on the house are textured as well. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And here are the skaters out in front of the houses. They're young people, and they are the product of all of that carrying on that's going on between the couples behind them because those couples have children and they create families. And then those children, when they grow up, when they're teenagers, they go out into the world. And so here they are outside at night. They wanted to get away from their families, get away from their parents. And they are interacting with each other, a boy and some girls. And, you know, they're sort of beginning that process that will eventually lead to them being couples and, and having children of their own. So it's like the cycle of life is continuing with them outside the home, uh, sort of beginning that pairing off process of the skaters. How do you paint snow? The way I did it was first I underpainted the snow with pure white and then I, and I applied it in a kind of a rough manner. And then when that was dry, I scraped it down with a palette knife. And then I glazed thin layers of the blues and golds over the top of that to create the snow colors. Now, because the snow is translucent, I had to make sure that the edges of the shadows were also a little bit soft because they're being cast on this sort of translucent powdery substance. But here's the finished painting, the skaters, 26 high by 42 inches wide. It's a surrealist painting. And the reason it's a surrealist painting is because it's a blend of the conscious and the unconscious, the visual and the remembered. And this is my memory of growing up in Parma, Ohio, of skating at night under the moonlight. It's a combination of the visual appearance of things with memory and with the subconscious perception of things and blend it together to create a more truthful image, a more complete picture of reality. This painting was finished in 2018. I had to let it dry. I varnished it. I framed it. And then I sent it to one of my favorite galleries, the J. Willott Gallery out in California, where they displayed it and they sold it to an interested collector. Well, this weekend, the weekend I'm making that video, this video, there's a hurricane bearing down on California, the first one in almost 100 years. 
And I contacted the gallery and I said, well, what are you guys doing? And he said they were piling up sandbags in front of the gallery to prevent any flooding. So in this serene world of beauty, the art world, uh, reality intrudes. Natural disasters intrude. Weather intrudes. And we can see that happening this weekend. Well, thank you for watching this video. And my name is Leonard Kozianski. I painted this picture. And thanks again.